quickly realized what, uh, that there are two kinds of superfluids. One is called chiral superfluids. Which we denote by phi. And then there are vector superfluids. They have, they take uh, from spin half to spin one, so they have one different, uh, two different uh, spin half and spin one. These are multiplets of spin zero and spin half. Then there are three functions, um, okay, one is not an independent function, okay. So there are three independent functions, so one is the Keller potential. Out of which one we say that we set it to one, which is the gauge kinetic function. Uh, so one is the Keller potential. Which is given by a real function of the superfluids. And it takes a component theta, theta, theta bar, theta bar. It is the, we just had to multiply these fields, take the component which is the coefficient of theta, theta, bar, theta bar. Integrate it out or whatever it means, it means that you just take the coefficient of this. Okay, then there is the super potential. is a holomorphic function which is theta theta. So uh, if it has to be uh, uh, if it you are not allowed in order of the interactions, so the dimension of W And dimension of k is less than one. So this is what supersymmetry forces which we are seeing. Okay. Uh, that uh, this is the only term allowed in the Keller potential. Okay. This is the only term allowed in the Keller potential. And we will see now the interactions. How we interact. And then there is one more. Uh, field strength superfield, uh, which is a derivative or rather given by it is derived from the vector potential itself uh, or the Keller potential or the vector superfluid. Okay, <laughs> from the vector superfluid. I don't know why I'm going to all kinds of names. But so, this is given by the vector superfluid, and it's, a, it's like a charge that is superfluid, Keller superfluid, and you take the theta theta point. Sir, uh, the motivus of the end, the right the derivative of the Keller uh, Yes. Just to neglect the other field. Right. Essentially, you just want to have only theta components in your from the com, 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 uh, in your definition of chiral superfield. Mm -hmm. And there is no such thing for the vector superfield. Uh, vector superfield has a, it's a real superfield. So v dagger v is v dagger is equal to v. That is a condition. Okay. okay. If you put v dagger is equal to v, you end up having certain terms, and certain terms you can set them to be zero. In the Vesuvian age. So, so that the lowest dimension field you can have in the Vesuvian age is the vector field. A mu is the lowest dimension. So, in any chiral theory, like be it supersymmetry or other, you can just neglect the other fields by, uh, by denoting the direct derivative to zero. In any chiral field. 
any current field? Any parallel field, you yeah. know, that the right uh, derivative to be zero of that field is the condition to be. If you start with a general superfield, okay, you start with a general superfield, how do you derive current superfield? What is the condition? That, that's the right that is the condition. If you start with a general superfield. Now, if you want vector superfields, I mean, not this kind of vector, I mean, you know, there are something called hyper superfields, hyper and so on. Uh, they come in n is equal to 2 superfields, in which you can have spin 1, spin half, spin 0, in one multiple. So that means uh, there are two supersymmetric generators instead of one supersymmetric generator. So we are not worried about those kind of things. They are called hypers and so on. So on. If you want, I can tell you about hyperbolic and everything else at some point. But let's do the MSSM first. Yeah. Uh, so fields are two fields. So these are, and each of them I have written the terms corresponding to this. Uh, super potential gives you only interaction terms. Mass terms for formulas, scalar. That's it. Interaction terms means Yukawa interaction. And Kera potential, only Yukawa interaction, by the way, no interaction. interactions. Kera potential is the kinetic term. Scalars, formula. And speed terms for the super field gives you kinetic terms for. In one, uh, which we call it as a gauge, gauge goes on and gauge. So now you have your full uh, Lagrange. So the Lagrange is a fraction of this. So today we will look at uh, gauge interactions. The first thing we want to look at simple global symmetries. Global symmetries are simple, very simple. You just write e power some charge times some alpha. Yeah. Some charge times some alpha. So then we take a superfield pi goes to pi prime is equal to. As usual, these fields, uh, these transformations act on any superfields. So how does it act on the pi diagram? And you immediately can see that k is invariant. k is invariant. What about W? 
So the most general form of W is some linear term which you can always observe essentially some m i j phi r phi j. Remember no dagger is allowed. This is difference between supersymmetry and ordinary theory. Okay, this is always plays a role. So compared to supersymmetry. So this will mean if I want to impose this symmetry, this means two conditions either qi plus qj is equal to zero or so if you want to introduce any term in the super potential under human symmetry or local or global, remember that you cannot introduce daggers. You cannot introduce daggers. You have to explicitly introduce a field with an opposite type of charge or hypercharge or human charge. This one is what? QI plus QJ plus QK is equal to 0. Or y i j j. This is anyway, this condition you know it as holomorphic condition or whatever. So why do you need to reach the breadth models and this one and so on? This is slightly popular. People who have studied MSSM they would understand it. But people, for those people who did not study MSS, it is important to know that you cannot introduce dagger fields in the superpotential. Because supersymmetric and superpotential is always uh, holomorphic or analytic. So that's the reason why if you want to make an invariance under uh, in superpotential, you need to have fields with the opposite human charge. Opposite Otherwise, there is no term which you can write. Now, what is this alpha? This alpha is some free parameter, right? So, this alpha can be thought of some free, it's some constant super free. Can be thought of as some constant super free. Some constant. Some Now, how do you introduce local transformations? This is about global, K is invariant, so on, so W is as these conditions. It's fine. So, local gauge transformations. The situation reverses. In fact, you can find easily double invariant, but k is not invariant. Okay. The reason is uh, uh, the way we introduce local gauge transformations is again pi goes to pi prime. Let me put an i or b is equal to e power i q i some lambda of x theta theta bar. So this is a chiral super field I'm introducing. Now this is not a chiral super field. If I explain this explanation, only products of chiral super fields are chiral super I put some other field here, it won't be a chiral super field anymore. So the gauge transformation doesn't make sense. So gauge transformation should preserve the chirality of the super field. Okay? So this lambda is not a chiral super field. Phi will no longer remain a chiral super field. 
So that's the reason why So I let me call it alpha itself. So what I did was I increased the I promoted alpha, which is a constant supercube, to a full currency. Now how does phi diagram transform? Phi diagram transforms with the same thing. Now what happens to k? Is k equivalent? What happens to k? <coughs> k goes to phi diagram phi e power i q i lambda Agree? So it has a term which is not, it has to be somehow removed. That's an extra term which has to be So I do introduce again minimal coupling. Okay? But minimal coupling is introduced in a completely different sense because it has to be invariant and super transformation, super transformation. The way I do this minimal coupling is, I say k under transformations go as phi diagram e power q v phi, where v is a Now, what is the condition on B? What is the condition on B? B transforms as this difference. B transforms as this. Such that k phi is equal to phi i dagger e power g or q v phi 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 is equal to phi i dagger, so this should be a phi e power q v phi i. Now this will only be possible when V prime minus V delta V is equal to Q lambda minus lambda. Minus sanction. So there will be I Q E power lambda lambda prime coming here. 
mean time will give me minus q. These two terms will cancel in exponential and will be minus two. So this is how we introduce gauge invariant transformations, local gauge invariant transformations in super semiconductors. So the Kerr potential gets modified to be e power q v pi. And then again, theta, theta, theta bar, theta bar, theta bar. That won't change. But then, e power g. So, when you expand this, it has 1 plus q v. Okay? 1 will give me pi dagger phi. So, it has two terms. The second one will give me q pi dagger v phi term. And in the Vesumina gauge, V cube is equal to what? Zero. Very good. Who answered that? Rabat. <laughs> you are <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> there is some light in the class. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So all this we do it in let's zoom it up. So let me put a WZ. And we saw the Vesum gauge the other day, right? The entire terms we wrote down. Okay. V cube terms, V square terms, and so on. So, uh, by the way, uh, I regarding the component notation. I just wanted to frighten you all, so I uploaded the book. I remembered the others, okay, Miller, Christian, and Weidelman, okay, and I uploaded the book on the team's page. So just play with the resume. I'll give you an assignment on Thursday, okay. <laughs> just okay. Once in your lifetime, you should do the calculations essentially and forget about them. I think they are, but it has a very good. Uh, Understanding of spinals, Marana spinals, and Lorentz group representations as well. So, what happens to W now in local invariance? The same conditions hold for local invariance also. Okay. For W. Same conditions So for fun, let me expand this term. has all the terms which we have seen, f square term, I will only write those terms which are important actually. So this has f square, then phi which is a box a star, then kinetic term for the formula. Then Important things are these.
new. I want to change it to my notation. Uh, theory, I think, in my notation. I don't like uh, recent data from notations. I want you to look at these terms carefully. Uh, because this is what so first we have standard gauge interactions, psi bar, gamma mu, psi, vector meson. Okay, psi bar, gamma mu, psi. Then correspondingly scalar will not come with gamma mu but will come with del mu. It will come with del mu. So it's like scalar QD. In scalar QD, you don't have a current. You make a current with the with the differential of it. Okay. So you have a del mu, del mu. So this is like ordinary QD. This is like ordinary scalar QD. What is new? What is new in supersymmetry is these terms, which are equivalent. These are two fermions and a scalar. Two fermions and a scalar. This is AG mu fermion scalar interactions, which are recover like interactions but go with the strength of the gauge. Okay? Recover interactions but determined by gauge interactions. And the fourth one is V mu V mu A star A. So this term is already there in scalar theory. It is the same term in scalar theory also, which holds us to square okay, or e square, whatever it is. Okay. This high dimensional term is there in scalar theory. We'll do it in a second. Okay. So, but this is the new term which you get in supersymmetry. Okay. This is so if you think supersymmetry theory, let's write down. It's not like resuming a model. Okay. In Vizumna model, what we did, we added KG field, Dirac fields, both the Lagrangians and insisted that they should be transformations which make them equal. Then we put some conditions. Here, you cannot take scalar QD, ordinary QD and try to add them and you won't get all the results actually. You won't get all the results unless you add gauge interactions. Unless you add gauge interactions, which are possible. So this derivation is much easier in superfluid notation. That's the reason why it's rather than component compensation. That's the reason why we jump into superfluids very fast. Okay? So you have an interaction which is gauge you know, you know, and scale. And where is this coming from? Tell me where this is coming from. This is also coming from where? Keller potential or Upsoko potential? Why this? Yes. <laughs> Just take a question. <laughs> no, it cannot be <laughs> Upsoko potential. <laughs> it has to be the Keller potential. It has to be the, all the gauge interactions come from the Keller potential, right? Essentially. So this comes from Keller potential. This comes from the Keller potential. This comes from kinetic terms. All the kinetic terms come from the Keller potential. So, what is the one which is coming from super potential? As of now, there is nothing. Because, as you have seen, I only expanded the Keller potential. <laughs> All the Okay. Okay, good. So now, now let's apply, apply. Let's actually apply and see if we can get supersymmetric QD 
and what are the difference between ordinary QED and standard? Uh, my rotation is slightly different. I don't have the full handwritten notes, but I put. Uh, uh, it's slightly different compared to what Vincent Bank does. Uh, this is. Uh, I put my lecture notes on the on the Teams page. So remember what is our QED? QED is a PD of electron and a photon. No other particles are there. It's a PD of electron and a photon. Psi PD. Psi goes to psi prime. Alpha of X. I should put a charge also. And when you take the derivative of psi, because you see, you have a problem with alpha of x essentially. So it's a problem with two terms. A term which is derivative of the gauge value, derivative of the gauge value. Now you want to get rid of it. We get rid of it by del mu to capital del mu to minimal complete. Is equal to del mu plus i. Uh, I should put a coupling constant also. I g or e. So that delta A mu of x transforms as delta mu alpha. Delta A mu is A mu pi minus A mu. So the final QED Lagrangian, so it is simple, L QED is equal to I capital del slash sin electron plus psi psi minus Will any term I'm missing? No. Yes, maybe. No. No. Now, what is L scale of QD? Now we want to write combine these two in a super smooth way. Okay. We want to combine these two in a super smooth way. So 
for doing that, let's just see what are the set of primary rules we have in this. Okay. So what do you have? QED has only one primary rule. That's it. One interaction term. Scalar QED has two interactions. comes from this term. If we expand it, del mu del mu pi divided by del mu del mu term pi divided by okay a mu a mu pi divided by term. So there are three primary rules. These two go as i e. This one goes as i e square. It's higher order in gauge coupling. Now, how do you super symmetrize this? First, let's do the particle boundary. Electron has how many degrees of freedom? It's a direct electron. That's four degrees of freedom. So, one left and one right, and corresponding antiparticles. So, how many chiral superfluids are showing? <laughs> you don't have to be sure. Okay. So, one for the left field, one for the right field. So, you always remember how many parallel fields of your multiplet is Okay. So, you introduce one EL corresponding to left. This contains EL, homeon, tilde, the scalar, and E. So this is a scalotron, selectron, left handed selectron. So this contains ER tilde, ER. Now I have to be careful while assigning charges. Can I assign? If I assign, both of them, the same electric charge, left handed and right handed, will they have a mass in the superfluid? No. no. These are two current superfluids. Okay. The right handed part, I am not taking it as an anti current superfluid, I am taking it as a regular left handed current superfluid. Okay. In a way, if you want, this is actually ER tilde star ER C ER bar. Okay? So that means I am changing its charge, right handed field charge. Normally you don't change the charge of the right handed field, it has the same form. But I am taking it as, I am taking this as a normal. Real field, uh, sorry, complex field, star field as a complex field, and here also under as another, another complex field essentially. Here bar also as another complex field and made it a super multiplicator. So, such that what I call here field has a negative charge compared to here. That way I can assign a master for this to So, if I have a negative charge plus one here, as 
Do you all agree with this? I can make super fluids out of anything, any complex vector or anything. Okay? If you forget this also, what I am trying to say is that I am assigning my charges in such a way that EL has a plus one under E1 charge, ER has a minus one under it. Now if you want to map it to standard model, if you want to map it to standard model, then you have to make sure that ER tilde star has a positive uh, negative charge because ER tilde star or scalar theory because okay, it has a negative charge. If you don't want to map it to standard one, it's fine. Standard PD. So one left current P and one right current P. Is this sufficient? I also need to introduce a vector support. Because for photon, I need to introduce a vector support. The vector super field B or A the vector super. contains a mu and lambda this is called protein this is called photon the fermionic partners of gauge bosons are called enos and the scalar partner of matter is called selectrons Super partner of electron, which is a scalar, is called a cyclone. The super partner of photon is called a photon. Okay. This is very important nomenclature, otherwise, you will get lost in supersymmetric talks because <laughs> it's E norms, K G norms, and so on. So now we are done. Can somebody write to me the QD Lagrange? What would it be? Tell me what is the KLA potential? How many terms will be there in KLA potential? There will be two terms. One for psi L, one for psi L. Okay? So this will be sum over L R. E L or some more related to E L dagger E power E power G K E L plus or E A because E is the charge. No? I said Q is equal to 1. If you want to put Q as this point, let's set Q is equal to 1. A E R dagger E power E A. We all agree with this. There are two kinetic terms, one for the left hand, one for the right hand. You can combine them and write it with a single kinetic term. It's like writing the kinetic terms with the parallel notation of the Okay. So this entire thing has theta, 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 bar, theta. Yeah, they have opposite sides. I didn't put the charge. So accordingly, the charge will change. If I put the charge, the charge will change. You are right. They have opposite sides. Now, how will you write W? What is the only term which is allowed in W?
that is the only term. So the mass for that. There are, this is the only thing which is allowed by your symmetry. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is allowed. No other terms are allowed. Let's see here means W prime, okay, W bar. So what is the solution for the F? F term, I told you, is the solution. Now you can expand everything. So this form I have given in terms of F bar F, F star F. This has a D, uh, this also has a D, and F bar F and so on. So uh, I will keep that. Uh, where should I write that? Okay, we can write it again. So remember there are only three vertices in QED plus scale of QED. So F again, I told you this is the formula for F. For every, that is, that means we have F1 for here, still F VR. You can directly take the superfield, there is no problem. You don't have to worry about the scalar part. You can directly take the superfield and write and write x star f l l plus f star f e r e r. When you solve for this, you know what the f terms are. And the d term is the standard d term is G Q I L with a star L uh, Q L plus Q R R with a star So there is a minus sign corresponding to both of them. It is one it is minus one. So there is a relative minus sign. So the general form of the D term in any QD uh, like U of these is G pi star QI pi pi. Some more on it. So you can scale a point. I'm purposefully writing in filter notation because I want you guys to get used to it. Okay. So we'll see this formula for non degree mixed techniques. So the total supersymmetric QG. Minus one by four of medium of medium plus i. How many fourteen fourteen are there? How many fourteen are there? Only one. Okay, because you are with you one. Okay. Lambda ba sigma mu del mu lambda. Plus del mu EL tilde dagger del mu EL plus del mu EL tilde dagger del mu EL Sir, did you discuss the D term? Uh, 
Okay. I must have mentioned it. Did I discuss it? Did I discuss it when I am discussing you know, uh, vector products? Super piece. You were there on the day? Vector superfields, the day I discussed vector superfields, I discussed it. Okay, I can tell you about it essentially. Not a problem. Or if you wait, I can tell you during super symmetric breaking. Okay, but I can tell you briefly. Okay, just wait, uh, see here. Okay, vector superfields have an expansion in terms of theta, theta, theta. Uh, so there are sigma. So there are two terms in theta. One small in theta, okay. Then there is an auxiliary key corresponding to the vector superfluids, which is given by this. And when you do the equations of motion, again, you can solve for it. Exactly like what, how you got the expression for f terms. So you do this equations of motion, and this turns out to be this form, general form. Because it's always unless you put the gauge interactions, it doesn't make sense essentially. Because vector super means you have to interact with this thing. And then so this gives me g phi i star tau a phi i. This is the general definition. Okay. This is an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary term which you get in the vector superfluid. And you can solve for the equations of motion and you get this one. Because unless you, the matter, uh, unless you put in matter, you won't be able to do it. Because matter acts always as a source term for gauge interaction. Okay. If you don't have matter, you don't have interactions. Are you satisfied? Or? Then we have I L sigma mu del mu L plus I L bar sigma mu bar del mu L. These are typo. Plus root two e e l lambda e l to the lambda plus x c plus root two e e r lambda e r delta lambda plus x c. Plus M E E L E R minus E R E L not minus plus minus M E square E L E R square minus E R E R square minus E square to E L E R square minus E R E R so in the regular term you have f square and b square. Okay, f square plus b square. This is b square term. Okay, let's start with the bottom. This is b square. B a b a g a g a square b a b a b term. See your b term. Okay, this is your f term. Ensuring that electrons and selectrons have the same mass. Electrons and selectrons have the same mass. This is your term from W. Super potential. It only gives you mass terms. Okay? Or you have terms. 
This is all this rest is coming from your calorie function. All this rest is coming from your calorie function. So you have no, this is coming from uh, what is it called? Free sun superfluid. This part, the analytic terms for the photon and photino is coming from free sun superfluid. Now, kinetic terms for the scalars, kinetic terms for the scalars, kinetic terms for the fermions, and the Ikawa like gate interactions are coming, all these things are coming from your Taylor function. Okay? So, this entire part. Is coming from your killer function. So now you see various parts, field strength superfluid, killer potential, super potential, F term, D term. Okay, now you have your supersymmetric fluid. So what are the fundamental rules here? So let's start with the term. First term you see at the bottom is a D term, which has four super uh, scalar fields. All of them with an interaction strength of the fluid. Same as up. So you have a quartic, quartic term, which is EL, PR. But its strength is what? E squared. Its strength is E squared. So, this is what supersymmetric does. It doesn't give you the freedom to introduce a new coupling in a gauge theory. Even in supersymmetric standard model, there is no lambda term. The moment you have gauge interactions, all the quartic terms are gauge interactions. All the quartic terms are gauge interactions. Second is essentially mass terms. Then you have a new term which is not there earlier. Instead of a photon, you have a photon interaction, selectron, electron, and a lambda, which we call it as a new tilde. A photon. And its final rule always has a combination of it's a gauge boson, so gauge line, but it's a fermion. Okay? A fermion which acts like a gauge boson. A fermion which acts like a gauge boson. So you put both of them together. And it has a strength again IE. Then you have your regular QED. For EL, ER, EL, ER, and regular scalar QED. Scalar QED, QED, bonus. Here, here, here in super You get extra terms. 
मुक्ति विचार So, in any gauge theory, all the other interactions are controlled to the gauge interactions. In so, so, if you want to introduce, it is possible, but you can have to introduce without couplings, okay, with extra fields, such that even then to introduce a quartic coupling is extremely hard as long as you don't introduce singlets. There is a, there is a, Caveat for it. So, supersymmetry without singlets, supersymmetric case without singlets will always give you quartic couplings proportional to gauge couplings. The moment you introduce singlets, things change essentially. Singlets meaning singlets are the gauge Supersymmetry work in this theory. We said at the end of the day, we didn't talk about motivation of why we need supersymmetry, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Now let's see one interesting feature. We talked about that all the masses are protected by some symmetry, right, essentially. And we said that scalar masses are not protected by any symmetry. Now let's consider the case of supersymmetric theory. In which case there is a mass term for the scalars. There is a mass term for the scalars. This mass term is it protected or not? So let's look at the Feynman diagrams. So what are you have the Feynman diagrams? Let us see what are the connections you can get for electron and electron. Electron and So, starting with this, we have electron, cell phone, cell phone sitting here, then electron, here there will be an electron and a gauge loop. These are electrons. All these are selectron. This is E square, so okay. All of them are E square.
So all the diagrams are of E square and the mass of the electron and the mass of the electron are the same. What is the mass of the protein? Zero. 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 Mass of the protein is zero. So what happens is these diagrams cancel with each other. All the log, only logarithmic divergences are the but those also we cancel in the large super symmetry. If you don't break super symmetry, they exactly cancel. If you don't break super symmetry, these diagrams cancel with each other with opposite spins. If you have spin 1, then this spin half which cancels. If you have spin half, spin 0, spin half which cancels. With the opposite spin, they will start cancelling. So, I don't know if there is, it's available in fine calc or something, so it's not a few or so, fine master or something. And just put it, run the p-graph and everything, and just check this result is valid. <laughs> so in the exact supersymmetric limit, okay, the correction to the selectron mass is zero. Okay, selectron masses. By Why? What does supersymmetry do? It ensures the couplings are same and the masses are also same. It ensures that the couplings are same, the masses are same. So this way you have a symmetry for scalar particles. Okay? If you have this kind of a structure. If you have a super symmetry, this is the best known example okay, of a symmetry uh, which can protect the uh, Higgs mass or any scalar part. So the main difference in other cases like pin Higgs, which we, I don't know whether we have time to talk about it, is that the contributions from opposite spins cancel each other in supersymmetric limits. In the limit of exact supersymmetry, they exactly cancel. There are no corrections. So this goes under the line that the superpotential is non renormable There are some very nice interesting theorems called non renormable theorems. I am just uh, telling you the result, but uh, they, they, they can be, uh, they are wonderful theorems actually. Okay? So, this is a consequence that the super potential is not renormalized in super symmetric theorems. Here we have the mass coming from the super If you want to understand modern norms of the theorems, I won't have time to it, but look at uh, Cyborg's uh, very nice article on modern norms. He re explains everything okay, about modern norms of theorems in 94, 95, around that time. Okay, it's an archive section. So the super potential W is not renormalized. In the limit, super symmetry is not renormalized. This feature is still valid. That means the way you break supersymmetry is that you don't lose these features of supersymmetry. So that's how you break. That's how you break. It's called soft chains. Or it should be supersymmetric breaking is very very small compared to the 
symmetry itself. So very mildly you are breaking the symmetry. So each of these terms you have seen there, and so they cancel each other, and it doesn't get any corrections. So, uh, so how does it go for non-empty series? Because we want to go for non-empty MSSA. How does it go? Just change lambda to PL to a matrix, and that's it. A representation for that. So QD, any questions on QD? Supersymmetric QD? You all understood? Perfect. For non abelian symmetries, all you had to do is uh, phi equals to phi prime is equal to e power i and g and some tau a fit lambda a. So this uh, tau could be something it's like, like what we do for non abelian series. There is nothing except that we introduce several superfields corresponding to number of generators. For each generator, we introduce several And that's it. So we are now almost ready. Okay. To start with, uh, our journey towards MSSM. We want to start with but there is some hindrance. What is the hindrance? The hindrance tells you that if you have an electron and a selectron in supersymmetric QED, they form a nice multiplet. They should have the same mass and the same charge. Now if you transport it back to your ordinary standard mode, it means that Every electron should have the same mass selectron. So we don't find it in nature. So supersymmetry is not exact in nature. You have to break it. Okay? So we we'll start looking at breaking of supersymmetry. Uh, maybe I'll stop here because it's here. So oh, okay. There is some 10-12 minutes, but anyway, I'll leave you guys. Okay. So we need to break supersymmetry because Uh, because you don't find chronologically any selectron of the same mass of electron. Okay. Now, how do you break supersymmetry? You want to keep all the features of supersymmetry exact. You want to keep it nice. So, what are the two features of supersymmetry? Same couplings. Same mass. Suppose, so supersymmetry ensures that both of them have ME. ME. Suppose if I give an extra mass to this setup. I give an extra mass. Inertia to m square, I also give you an extra mass delta to selectron, then supersymmetric square. Okay. Similarly, for photino and photon, both of them have the same mass, which is zero. I cannot modify photon. 
but I can give a delta put in. Okay? By adding mass terms, I can break through. So these Sumsi partners are essentially gauge inodes and S matter or S per I can break the coupling. I should break the coupling so that gauge invariance is not broken. Gauge invariant couplings, if it is possible to write, if it is possible to write gauge invariant couplings, okay, of the form and superpotential. Of the form and super, superpotential is gauge invariant. But superpotential only gives you fermion masses and mass squares. It doesn't give you new couplings. Suppose if you have new couplings as the form as superpotential. Okay? With only as fermions. Has the same form as in superpotential, then gauge invariance is conserved or Suzy is broken. Say for example in Suzy QED, how do you break super smooth? Let's take the example of Suzy QED. Now with this philosophy, what are the terms you can add to the Lagrangian which can break Suzy QED? Okay? L Suzy QED plus Suzy QED. First, I can write mass terms, first electrons, which are different compared to the electron mass. So, normal electron mass are mv square, this thing. I'll add some term, L Suzy breaking, M EL tilde square, EL tilde plus n er tilde square er tilde square. just added them by hand I just added by hand and this MEL is not equivalent to ME this MEL is not equivalent to ME then I can add a Turn to the photon, protein. Okay. Plus M A tilde A tilde A tilde lambda lambda A tilde. Then, so this takes care of these terms, this cares care of this term. 
then I can add a coupling which is exactly like super potential coupling because super potential is always giving me. Okay? But then instead of super fluids, I really like scalar fluids. Okay? So this I call it as V and V. So from V parameter, E and V are E are V. Now there is no star here, remember, because this breaks the position, there is no star here. There is no star here. It is not real until I put the let's see here. This is gauging very clearly because here and here and here and it is gauging very But I just took the scalar components and added a new coupling here. It is like a new master. But it is a bilingual master. You can do the same with the car coupling. If you do it for the eco couplings, you call them as the trilingual couplings. These are called bilingual couplings. Now remember that there is no star. These are holomorphic scalar curves. These are holomorphic scalar curves. Okay. So in the next class, what we will do is we will see how we can get this kind of problem. I will see, I, I mean, I, I don't want to go into model printing because I like it very much. <laughs> I don't want to, okay, but still, I uh, will uh, tell you how you can get F-tops, D-tops, uh, or equivalent, give me this kind of soft terms, essentially. I will just structure it. Uh, maybe I will do first uh, MSSM and then I will do this term, how we say. First I will do MSSM and then I will do now, do you all agree with this argument? Okay. Do you all agree how you break supersymmetry? Now, this kind of breaking is called soft supersymmetry. Because why it is soft? Why it is soft? All are dimensionful couplings. All the breaking terms are dimensionful couplings. So, such terms are called soft terms. Hard terms are lambda type, phi 4. Okay. G psi bar, psi gamma mu, and psi bar, gamma mu, psi a mu, those are hard terms. They require typical renormalization. They reintroduce renormalization of the But we want to keep supersymmetry breaking to the minimum. All the nice features, very nice. Okay, keep them intact. Okay, and that's the reason we only just introduce this one soft breaking, which is very much used actually in many of the models, Cooling's Dominic models, and everything. In a very similar way, we look at all possible soft terms which can break supersymmetry and just add. Okay? This is the philosophy of Demopolis and Georgia. Whereas other people were, the history is that other people were actually looking at building supersymmetric breaking models like Pi A and Pi A tried to build a new model within their own apparatus. They were trying to build an F-term model and so on. So. But Demopolis and Georgia said, forget about all that. We know the final result should be these. These are the only terms you can write down which break supersymmetry, but at the same time uh, conserve the main features of supersymmetry. So that's the reason why this is called soft supersymmetry. So these are the soft supersymmetry. So now you have the full supersymmetry theory Lagrangian. Introducing that, we'll introduce logarithmic corrections to the Selectron mass, which is computable, which is computable in the of this graph. Okay, so I'll stop here. Yeah. So if you have changed, I mean, added something just like the D term, uh, the phi for P, and that would be fast. No, that is proportional to gauge coupling. Yes. So, so that is the reason? Something? No. The, uh, okay, but it will break the gauge in It will break the gauge in It will break the gauge such term is not possible in such term. Okay. Any questions on susceptivity? Okay, so let's stop here. And uh,
next class would be online as you all overwhelmingly voted so it will be on Thursday same time 11 30. 11 30 is fine now next week I will cancel Tuesday class okay. it's okay we deserve one it's okay <laughs> Okay. <laughs>